So, good morning everyone and uh, welcome back to the lectures on classics in total synthesis. Uh, we have been discussing total synthesis of many natural products in the last uh, few lectures. We are focusing on synthesis of uh, quite a few alkaloids. So, today and tomorrow we will talk about an alkaloid which is also very well known and famous alkaloid which is used as a painkiller um, is none other than morphine. So, morphine uh, is an interesting alkaloid. In fact, uh, in 1806 that was a year where the morphine was isolated in pure form, okay. it was isolated in pure form from the poppy seeds. So, that was the beginning of isolation of pure natural products from the natural source. So, it was done by uh, a young pharmacist uh, called Friedrich Saturner and this is the structure of morphine. So, if you look at this molecule, it is a pentacyclic structure as a, an aromatic ring uh, having a phenol and 3 3 six membered rings 1, 2, 3 and a dihydrofurane ring okay. and you can see 1 chiral center, 2, 3, 4, 5. There are 5 contiguous chiral centers in this molecule okay. and since then there are many natural products which were isolated in pure form from the naturally occurring sources. And if you, as you can see the natural product is quite complicated uh, structurally. So, it took quite some time uh, to illustrate its correct structure. In fact, uh, about 100 years ago Sir Robert Robinson, a well known uh, synthetic organic chemist, he proposed the correct structure of morphine and it took another 27 years to confirm the structure of morphine as you know those days any new structure was isolated and then the correct structure was proposed by someone, but still the final proof came in the form of only total synthesis. So, the first total synthesis of this molecule was reported by Gates uh, in 1952 and 3 years later uh, X-ray also confirmed its structure. So, there are several total synthesis of this molecule uh, considering its complexity, it is understandable. Many synthetic groups jumped on the total synthesis of this molecule, more than 30 total and formal synthesis are there in the literature. However, uh, this molecule if it has to be used in uh, you know uh, treatment, particularly pain related treatment, still people use only the natural sources because it, it can be obtained in huge quantity from natural sources. So, that is why that is a major supply for morphine and its analogs. And since morphine is a well known pain reliever, people started making several analogs. Uh, one of the infamous analogs is nothing but diacetyl morphine which is which has a unique name called heroin. Because of this particular uh, uh, infamous molecule uh, which can be easily obtained by simple acetylation of morphine with acetic anhydride. Acetic anhydride is a controlled substance, okay. So, uh, we all know. So, when you have to use acetic anhydride, uh, you, you have to follow certain uh, guidelines and then you cannot uh, get more amount of acetic anhydride for academic purpose. And the simple reason is uh, the conversion of morphine to heroin can be done in single step using acetic anhydride. Now, there are several analogs, some are natural. See, for example, if one of the hydroxyl that is the phenolic hydroxyl group, if it is methylated then this is called codeine. So, this is also naturally occurring and if both the hydroxyl groups are methylated then that natural product is called tibane and if the phenolic hydroxyl group is free and the other hydroxyl group that is uh, uh, you have a diene in fact, it is a uh, you oxidize this. Uh, um, the alphabet, the allylic alcohol to alphabet answer the ketone, then you form the dienol ether. So, that is called oribimine, okay. So, these are all naturally occurring, but there are many semi synthetic molecules. So, one is hydromorphone, that means 
you reduce the double bond and also oxidize the alcohol. So, that is called hydromorphone. And if this hydrogen is replaced by hydroxyl group, then it is called oxymorphone. Okay? And this molecule is called hydrocodone, where the hydromorphone is just methylated, the phenolic hydroxyl group is methylated. And here too, the oxymorphone to oxycodone, what you have done is the phenolic hydroxyl group is methylated. These are all semi synthetic morphine derivatives. And instead of N methyl group, okay, so you in morphine, N is methylated, and instead of methyl group, if you have allyl group, and here if you have a hydroxyl group, then this is called naloxone. Okay. And this is uh, diacetyl morphine, already I told you it is common name that is heroin. And if you do not have carbonyl group, if you do not have that oxygen, if you do not have the double bond and if the phenolic hydroxyl group is acetylated, so this is called disomorphine. These are all for just information, uh, you do not have to worry too much. So, why I am saying all this and then uh, showing all these structures uh, is because morphine derivatives are used as analgesic. So, there are still lot of work going on in making more and more analogs of morphine. So, this particular uh, molecule, if you look at, this is made from tibane. So, they take tibane and then do a diel sol reaction. Okay? They do a diel sol reaction with methyl vinyl ketone and followed by addition of tertiary butyl lithium. You introduce this. And here, instead of methyl group, you have cyclopropyl methyl group. Okay. So, this is also a very interesting analog of uh, morphine. So, now let us see how this molecule was synthesized and reported for the first time. As I mentioned, Gates was the first one to report the total synthesis of morphine and that was in 1952. So, you can imagine it took almost 150 years since its isolation and 27 years after its structure was you know, proposed by Robert Robinson to complete the first total synthesis. So, this is the structure of morphine. So, if you do a 180 degree rotation, okay, you get this structure. Okay. And that can be written like this because this is also important when you think about any molecule in three dimensional way. So, the confirmation is very important. So, I leave it for a few seconds so that you know you can see how this molecule can be redrawn uh, in this form. Okay. And as I mentioned, morphine has 5 contiguous stereocenters. Okay. And the first synthesis was reported by Gates um, and they took about 27 steps to complete this total synthesis. So, from the retrosynthetic point of view, the first disconnection was the methyl group here, if you can demethylate, then you will get the morphine. And this is also a natural product, as I mentioned, it is uh, codeine. And this codeine can be obtained uh, from this bromo codeine. So, basically, you have to debrominate and then do the reduction of the ketone. So, both can be done in one step. So, if you use LAH, so debromination can be done and the keto group can be reduced. And this can be obtained from this ketone and if you look at this, this is one of the key steps in the synthesis of uh, morphine. Uh, what they have done, they have to introduce a double bond here and they have to form a CO bond. At the same time, they also have to introduce a bromine. Okay. All these were done in one step. I will come to that as a beautiful step and how it was done, I will discuss a little later. And this compound uh, can be made from this alkene. Okay. So, you do either hydroboration oxidation, but that time hydroboration oxidation was not known. It is just addition of water. Okay. It is just addition of water, you introduce the hydroxyl group. And when you see this molecule, you can see a cyclohexene, isn't it? And you all know the cyclohexene can be obtained by a diel sol reaction. So, the precursor for this compound should be the corresponding alkene and the diene. Okay. Before that, this methylation 
and reduction of this will lead to the required compound. Uh, basically what is important is the cyclohexene how you introduce. The cyclohexene is introduced using the Diels-Alt reaction between this dienophile, you can see this dienophile and simple butadiene. Okay. Then this CH2CN can be reductively cyclized with this ketone. Okay. We will discuss more in details when we talk about the synthesis. So that leads to uh, this particular uh, orthoquinones okay, that can be obtained from either the corresponding amino phenol or dihydroxy compound and which in turn can be obtained from the dihydroxy naphthalene. So this dihydroxy naphthalene is the starting material which is also is a symmetric compound. Okay. Now let us see how Gates has synthesized this morphine starting from dihydroxy naphthalene. So he took this dihydroxy compound as I said this is a symmetrical compound. So one can selectively protect one of the phenolic hydroxyl group as benzoate then followed by you know nitrosation. So treatment with sodium nitrite and acetic acid one can introduce a NO group at this carbon. Okay. So that is what he did and that NO group can be reduced to get the corresponding NH2. So once you have that then you oxidize with the ferric chloride. So what you get is the orthoquinone and this orthoquinone now can be reduced to get the corresponding dihydroxy compound. So this is how the dihydroxy was introduced which as you know one of them should be protected as methyl group the other one should cyclize here. Okay. So once you have this dihydroxy compound methylate both of them. Okay. The standard method is use a base mild base like potassium carbonate and dimethyl sulfate to introduce the methyl group. So the next step you have to remove this benzoate. So you can remove it with uh, potassium hydroxide and methanol and introduce the NO group here. Okay. So the same thing sodium nitrate, acetic acid you introduce the NO and again reduce it to get the corresponding NH2 and oxidize this under the same condition which I had discussed that is ferric chloride you get the corresponding quinone. So if you look at this, this is a Michael acceptor, okay? this is a Michael acceptor. So that means it can undergo the 1,4 addition. So the next step has been the addition of anion generated from this cyanoethyl ester. Okay? So that will undergo 1,4 addition followed by introduction of the double bond. So that can be done with potassium ferricyanate. So in this step 1,4 addition takes place followed by introduction of the double bond you get this compound. Okay. Then you can do the decarboxylation you do not need this ester once that it served its purpose you have to remove it. So that ester could be removed by potassium hydroxide methanol. So you get only the CH2Cn, the CH2Cn only is intact. Okay. So what is the next step? You have the dienophile and now you should do the intermolecular Diels-Alt reaction with butadiene. Okay. So that worked well and the cyclohexene is nicely introduced. The next step should be to reductive coupling reaction or reductive cyclization. The cyanide should be hydrolyzed to COnH2 and that COnH2 to cyclize with one of the ketones of the orthoquinone. So that is uh, you know safely done uh, with uh, hydrogen and this uh, copper, so copper chromium reagent. So that reduce the cyanide to COnH2 and then cyclized and this was the final product. So now you have introduced 4 rings, 1 aromatic and 3 6 membered rings. So what, what should be done to complete the total synthesis? 1, one has to methylate here because N-methyl is required for the synthesis of morphine. Then you have to cyclize or the oxygen should form a bond with this. And also the double bond 
should be isomerized at the same time you also should introduce an oxygen at this carbon. Okay. So, these are the few things uh, to do to complete the total synthesis of morphine. So, the easiest one and obviously the logically the first one to do is to methylate here. Okay. But before doing methylation you do not need this ketone is not it. The, if you look at the structure of morphine that carbonyl group is not required. So, you remove the carbonyl group using modified version of wolf Krishner reduction. Okay. So, now you remove the ketone then obviously the next step is the methylation of this lactam. So, methylation was done. So, the next step is the removal of the carbonyl group. So, that can be easily done by reducing with LAH to get the corresponding amine. Then dilute sulfuric acid treatment is nothing but addition of water. So, the addition of water takes place across a double bond and you get this regioisomer as a major product. So, once you have that now what you need to do between these two methoxy groups this particular methoxy group should be demethylate. So, that you can get the corresponding hydroxyl group then you try to cyclase here. So, this was done and almost under the same conditions as Wolf Krishna reduction. Okay, so, you, when they carried out the Wolf Krishna reduction uh, you know as you can see in the earlier slide they also I got some demethylated product. So, that is why they tried to repeat the same thing after other functional group transformations were done. So, now they could get the corresponding phenol. Then you oxidize the secondary alcohol. So, this was done using uh, Woodward open or oxidation condition to get this ketone. See until here this was a racemic synthesis. Okay, until here it was a racemic synthesis and at this point they resolved with dibenzyl tartaric acid to get the naturally occurring skeleton. Okay. So, the dibenzyl tartaric acid was used as a resolving agent. Then comes the key step. See in, in this one step many reactions were done. What is that? You add bromine and 2,4-dinitrophenylhydrazine and acetic acid. Look at the product. How many reactions were done in one step? Okay. One, this bromine was introduced. Yes, obviously, if you have a phenol and if you treat with bromine, bromination will take place, fine. Then what happened? You introduce a bromine here, you introduce a bromine here. So, basically, three bromines were introduced. Okay. That is the first step. Second step, this one cyclized. This one cyclized to form the dihydrofuran ring. And third one, the elimination of HBr, elimination of HBr to introduce this double bond. And the fourth step, the ketone underwent 2,4 dinitro benzylamine it form an imine. Okay. So, four steps took place in this one step, four reactions took place in, in this one step. So, once you have that next you have to hydrolyze this imine to get back your ketone. So, that was done with HCl and water and the next step just before completing the total synthesis is to remove or reduce the ketone. Okay. Reduce the enone to corresponding allylic alcohol and remove the bromine. So, both were done in one step by doing uh, by treating with LAH and this is nothing but another natural product called codeine and from codeine you what you need to do is just to do the demethylation. So, that was done with pyridine HCl at 200 degrees to get the corresponding demethylated compound which is nothing but morphine. So, overall if you look at the synthesis uh, it was started from an aphthalene 2,6 diol and the key reactions were diol salt reaction 
and one part tribromination, elimination, cyclization and imine formation. So, this is the second key step and it took about 27 uh, longest linear steps uh, and the yield was poor, but considering the conditions and the year in which it was reported and uh, it was the first total synthesis as well, it was one of the classical synthesis of morphine reported until now. Okay. So, now we will move to uh, the second total synthesis, actually this was the first uh, I would say asymmetric total synthesis and was reported by Overman and he has used uh, an intramolecular Heck reaction, hmm? intramolecular Heck reaction as the key reaction to synthesize morphine. Let us see how he has done the retrosynthesis because when you write conformationally it is easy to visualize and this can be obtained from this enone. Okay, simple reduction of this enone you will get this axial alcohol. Now you reduce the double bond because the double bond can be reduced when you go for the forward reaction. So, this will lead to this compound called dihydrocodeno okay? and that can be obtained from this alcohol. So, basically if you treat with MCPBA, so it will form epoxide and then immediately this can cyclize, is not it? And this double bond can be obtained through intramolecular Heck cyclization and that can be obtained uh, from these two compounds. Okay. So, you have aldehyde and this amine and it can cyclize to give this compound. And this particular compound that silyl 1 can be obtained from this aldehyde. So, that aldehyde can be obtained from this uh, diprotected aldehyde using a homologation and this particular allyl cyanine can be obtained from two allyl cyclohexene. Okay. Now, let us see how this synthesis was done and this is the you know, catalytic cycle for Heck reaction. So, I will not go into the details. So, Heck reaction is one of the well known reaction and he has cleverly used this intramolecular Heck reaction in the total synthesis of morphine. So, he started with the two allyl cyclohexenone and used CBS reagent that is Kore Bakshi Shibata uh, borane reagent oxazoborolidinone to get this allylic alcohol and once you have this then treat with phenyl isocyanate to get the corresponding carbamate. Now the silyl group was introduced and for that before you do that this double bond should be protected. So, he did the osmium tetroxide dihydroxylation followed by protection. So, you get the corresponding astronide. Then you treat with this phenyl dimethyl silyl lithium in the presence of copper. So, it undergoes uh, SN2 reaction on this, SN2 reaction on that particular carbon leaving this carbon. Okay. So, once you have that, uh, you remove the acetonide and you get the diol and treat with sodium pyruvate, it cleaves the diol to get the corresponding aldehyde. Okay. You have that aldehyde, then you treat with dibenzosuberone amine okay. and that along with sodium cyanoborohydrate, it undergoes a reductive amination. Okay. So, so the DBS is nothing but dibenzosuberone. Okay. That NH2, okay, this NH2, here if it is NH2, the NH2 will undergo imine formation followed by reduction you get this. This is nothing but a protecting group. This DBS is a protecting group that can be cleaved under hydrogenation condition. So, you have this NH. So, now this aldehyde which is uh, you know commercially available was protected as dimethoxy acetal. You treat with butyl lithium and quench with iodine followed by removal of uh, the acetal. You introduce the iodine here as well as remove this. Not only the acetal will be removed, but also MOM group also will be removed. Okay. So, first you introduce the iodine, the MOM group helps to introduce at this carbon and then remove the MOM group as well as the acetal using HCl condition. Then protect the hydroxyl group 
protect the phenolic hydroxyl as the benzyl ether, then you homologate the aldehyde to corresponding epoxide with dimethyl sulfonium uride. Then that epoxide and treatment with BF3 ethyrate, it rearranges to give the aldehyde which is now the homologated aldehyde. If you see this is a CHO, a protected CHO and you have increased it by 1 carbon. Take this aldehyde and then treat with this amine which we already discussed and do the reductive cyclization. Okay, first it forms the imenium ion and the dimenium ion undergoes, this is the key cyclization. You can see this double bond will add and the silicon will come here. So, be, because whenever you generate a positive charge at beta carbon with respect to silicon, the silicon will stabilize the positive charge. Okay. So, that is called beta silicon effect and that gives you this particular compound in 91 percent EE. This also can be written like this. Okay. So, I just leave it for few seconds so that you can understand. So, this can be redrawn like this. So, this is the uh, A ring, this is the B ring. So, you can see this is A, so this is B and the whole unit is here. So, now this is set for the intramolecular hex cyclization. So, when you do the hex cyclization, the double bond also will migrate, is not it? So, that is how the double bond migrates and then CC bond formation takes place. And now once you have the double bond, as I said, you can treat with MCBBA. Okay, you can treat with MCBBA to get the epoxide and the epoxide can be op open. But before that, you need this benzyl group to be removed. So then only as soon as the epoxide is formed, the phenol can open the epoxide. So benzyl group removal was selectively done with BF3 ethyrate and ethane thiol and you get the corresponding phenol. Then you can treat with uh, the MCBBA camphor sulfonic acid. So the, as soon as the epoxide is formed, intramolecularly the phenol will open the epoxide to give this alcohol. Okay. So now you, you can see all the five rings are ready. Okay. Oxidize the secondary alcohol okay, to get the ketone, then remove that protecting group to get the corresponding secondary amine and what you do when you remove that, say in the presence of formaldehyde, what happens? As soon as the NH is formed, the NH reacts with formaldehyde to form the imenium ion. Okay. That imenium ion again is further reduced and you get the corresponding methyl group. So, if you look at this, this is dihydrocodinone, what needs to be done is you have to introduce a double bond and reduce it. So, this is this was already reported. So, that is how Overman's a formal synthesis of morphine was done where intramolecular HEC reaction was the key step and he started from the commercially available isovanillin. And second important uh, key step was uh, sequential imenium ion allyl silane cyclization. Overall, he took about 10 steps and yield also was quite high compared to what Gates has reported, it is about 1 percent overall yield, 10 steps 1 percent overall yield is less, but you have to see this is a conceptually a new synthetic route to synthesize morphine in 1993. Okay. So, I will stop here and then we will continue our discussion on total synthesis of morphine by two more groups in the next lecture. Okay. Thank you.